Hey everybody, I decided to take a quick break from packing up shipments and answering emails today to shoot a quick video for you. I um, had a clutch that I thought would be pretty interesting for you to, to see. So um, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to see what an albino banana looked like. So I bred a, an albino to a banana and produced a banana head albino male, bred him back to an albino female, and the, the banana head albino male was a male maker. So most of the males that he would produce would be albinos, or I'm sorry, would be bananas. So a male maker banana produce most of the male offspring that he produces are bananas. Well, I produced a male albino in the clutch. So I'm, I assumed, okay, well, this must be an albino banana. Problem is it looked just like a normal albino male. Really no difference whatsoever, just average albino male. And um, I'd like to show him to you right here. So this guy, this is my male that I produce from a male maker, banana head albino. He's got a little bit of dirt on him or something. It's a problem with all these really light, bright snakes. They show stains and dirt and everything really easily. So I think we can all agree that looks pretty much like a typical albino. Okay, so I hatched, I, I decided, okay, I wanna see if this is an albino banana. Because if it is, you know, I mean, it doesn't look any different than a regular albino, so why, why bother to try to make albino bananas then? So I bred him to a pastel Enchi head albino and just hatched the clutch out and I got these. So there's a banana there. So obviously that male is an albino banana. I, I haven't really looked at all these all that carefully yet. But that's a male. And this one will, that one's a male too. Male maker uh, bananas will sometimes make males that aren't bananas as well. This is a female pastel and she had albino. So this was a, a, the mother was the same as what this is, a pastel and she had albino. Okay, now let's see these guys. That's a male. So, I mean, this is a male too, and this obviously isn't a banana. This one is a male, and most likely because it's a male maker, this one most likely is a banana but obviously it's impossible to tell unless you raise it up and breed them out because it looks just like a nice looking, pretty typical albino. So let's see what this one is. This one's a pastel albino. This one's also a male. Okay, these guys are kinda, I'm gonna get them back in here, take the ones I haven't checked, put those out. Okay, so this is a pastel albino. And also, he's most likely a banana. This one is a pastel enchi. I'm not sorry, it's not a pastel, it's just an um, albino enchi. Looks like a pretty typical one. That's a female. So this one most likely is not a banana. It's not impossible. That's the problem with these male maker, female maker things with bananas and coral glows for that matter, is it's like a 90% chance. So there's, there's a chance that this one could be a banana, but being that it's a female, I'd say probably not. Okay, then this one is another albino. That's a female. So this is most likely just a regular albino female. Okay, so in conclusion for that project, um, albino bananas look really no different than normal bananas. 
So that's one of those projects where, you know, sometimes you, you work on a project for several years and it just turns out dynamite, just produce exactly what you want. Other times things don't exactly work out the way you think they're going to. I kind of figured that the albino banana would look pretty much like a regular uh, albino because the albino takes away all the dark pigment and banana basically only takes away some of it. I was kind of hoping that uh, that it would, you know, how a normal banana develops black speckling all over them. I was kind of hoping that the albino would possibly have black speckling or possibly even white speckling all over it, but didn't work out, at least not with the one individual that I have here. So, uh, you know, you win some, you lose some, but I thought it was interesting and I get questions about albino bananas from time to time. So I just wanted to kind of show my experiences with it. And this clutch was perfect. It worked out perfect for me to, to show what, albino and banana do together. So the next thing I have here, we're going to cut open a clutch. And finally, I know a lot of you guys have been asking about egg cutting videos. Um, I, you know, I kind of have to do it when the eggs are ready to hatch. And if it's a day that I have time to shoot a video, then I shoot a video. If I don't have time to shoot a video, then, and I see the babies pipping already, then I just cut the rest of the eggs open and I'll show those after the hatch. Um, like the second clutch I'm gonna show here, they hatched over, or they pipped over the weekend, so I cut them open over the weekend. Um, this clutch is about ready right now, so I'm gonna cut these and we'll see what they are. Now I can see there's a bad egg in there. When the eggs are loose like this, I put pieces of light diffuser in between them just so that they don't touch each other. You know, if this egg, so this egg went bad, bad I, want, I don't want it to touch the other eggs. And this one actually must have moved a little bit closer to it, but I had a little bit of space in between so that that egg couldn't possibly taint the other eggs. So this clutch is from a pastel Mardi Gras bred to a pastel ivory. So pastel ivory is a pastel super yellow belly. A pastel Mardi Gras is a pastel Enchi asphalt yellow belly so let's see what we get here so all the babies are either going to be ivories or they're going to be a, a freeway which is a past or which is a um a yellow belly asphalt and some of them might have pastel in them some of them might have enchi in them that looks like an ivory Ivories do have a little bit of pattern on them, especially when they're uh, first hatched. They have a little yellow thin stripe going down the back with some kind of purplish color on the outside of the stripe. These eggs are maybe a day or two, not too early to cut, but, to cut, but a, a day or two earlier than what I normally do. but they'll be fine. I don't cut really big holes in them. Um, I don't want to spook the babies and make them crawl out prematurely. I just tend to open them up just enough to kind of see what's in there. I do have a lot of stuff hatching right now. Uh, really starting to get slammed with babies here. So you'll be seeing a lot more egg cutting and, uh, and hatchling videos coming up soon. That looks like a pastel freeway. I love these. Actually, I think this is a pastel freeway too. It might be a super pastel freeway. So I think, yeah, the female is a pastel ivory. So there could be super pastels in this clutch. Another pastel freeway. I can't see too much of that, but I'd say that's a, most likely a pastel or super pastel ivory. So it looks like we got one, two, three freeway combos. Actually, one, two, three, yeah. And then two ivory combos. And then this fine egg right here, which will go into the garbage right away. So that's it for egg cutting today, but I wanted to show you a clutch that I was hoping to show on video, 
um, but they wouldn't cooperate and they came out a few days too early. I was here by myself one day and wasn't able to shoot a video. This clutch is from a pastel clown het pied bred to a killer pied het clown. It's a super pastel pied het clown. And this, I believe, is a killer clown pied. It looks a little different than the other one that I hatched out a couple of years ago. My other one is basically bright yellow and patternless. It doesn't really even have any of this pattern. But I'm pretty sure that this isn't just a pastel clown pied. It may be. I'll, I'll be able to tell a little bit better once it sheds and can get a little closer look at it. And this is, uh, it looks like a pastel clown. And that's going to be 100% het for pied. Here's a killer clown, het pied. And this looks like it's a killer pied het clown. So this is definitely the best animal in this clutch, but everything is good. That's, you know, it's nice when you're breeding a visual, you know, clown that's het for pied to a visual pie that's het for clown. Everything is gonna be really nice. But this, I mean, this clutch turned out just almost perfect. And this is a boy too. Um, not sure if I'm going to keep him or not yet. I, I could use another male uh, clown pied here, so not really sure about that yet, but we'll see. I do expect to hatch several more clutches of these over the next month or two, so hopefully I'll have a few more of them here. Just awesome. All right. That's all I have to show for uh, for today. Uh, I've got a ton more here, and I'm going to try to. I'm, I know I've said this on the last several videos, but now I mean it. I've got so much stuff hatching right now that I'm going to be posting more videos. I'm hoping to do one a week throughout the summer. Um, if I don't, please forgive me. It, it it's going to get really busy. This all my hatchling racks are going to be full within the next probably month or so, and it's going to be hard just to keep up with all that. So. Uh, but I will try to get videos out as often as I can. In the meantime, make sure to check out my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com. I'll put it in the notes below um, and check out and see what I have available. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of updates on that. I'm going to try to get as many new snakes on there for sale as I can. Uh, but yeah, I've got so much cool stuff coming out. I'm, I'm so excited for this season. I mean, I look through, look at my incubators, which are absolutely jammed full right now. Um, I look at my incubators at the labels of all the, um, the clutches that I've got in there and just every one is better than the one before. It's, it's going to be so, so much fun. So anyway, um, stay tuned. I'll come up with another video soon. And like I said, make sure to check out my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com. See you guys soon.